What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and the topic that I want to address in today's video is whether or not you should give up sleep to be more successful, to get more things done throughout the day, you know, have more waking hours to gain some kind of a competitive advantage. And I think to me, this is, to me, it's just one of the more BS claims that, that's out there in the self-help, self-development, self-improvement industry, whatever genre you want to associate with that, and it's, there's just nothing to back this up. It's just useless posturing. It's the type of thing that sounds really cool in a motivational video. Like when you listen to an Eric Thomas video and he's talking about you gotta want it more than you wanna breathe and there's a 50 cent quote in there and he's like, sleep is for those people who are broke. You know, he doesn't need sleep. But the reality is, is that everybody needs sleep and anybody who's tried this knows that it doesn't work. And that's why it's so annoying to me. It kind of reminds me of when I was first getting into powerlifting and there was really not a lot of information out there. But some of the time that you would find information on like these random blogs and stuff, it was always infused with this weird philosophy of like what it means to be a real man. It's like pretending that women didn't even exist. The programming was just straight for dudes and all, it was all this weird hardcore posturing type of shit rather than just giving you the relevant information. And I think talking up sleep deprivation and going without sleep like it's a useful tool is kind of in a similar vein because there's just nothing to support that it's a good idea. Even though we don't necessarily understand sleep that well, sleep is one of the most heavily researched things out there. In particular because there's a lot of military applications. When there's uh, soldiers going on these long ass missions without food and sleep, they need to know how their cognition is affected, how their decision making will be affected because there's lives on the line, you know, people's safety, um, you know, nation building, whatever. There's a lot on the line. So they've studied this pretty extensively. And one of the ones that always comes to mind for me when I think of this topic is they did a test with computers, right? And it's kind of hard to describe this without visuals, so just give me a second there was a word that would pop up on the screen of the computer, right? And the word would always be a color. So the text would be like, say, red. But then the font color would be a different color than the word. So if the text said red, the font color of the word red would be blue. And the test would make people um, write the actual color that they were seeing or the word that they were seeing, you know, so by either one, vice versa. And then they, they would have to... Um, select that as quickly as they could and get the correct answer. And so what they did with this test was, you know, they had people who were, they took them when they were well rested, they had them do the test, saw, you know, what their approximate ability was under those conditions, and then they had them do it under mild sleep deprivation. And the interesting thing was that they gave them a survey afterwards and they asked these people, you know, how did you perform? And they thought that they crushed it, even when they were sleep deprived. But it turns out that their scores were 10, 20, 30, 40% worse than when they were fully rested. And so I think this is kind of a big problem with the whole sleep deprivation debate, if you even want to call it that, is a lot of people feel like they're still doing the same quality work when they're tired, but they're not. They're doing shit quality work. And I think anyone that's, like I said, anyone that's ever tried this knows that it doesn't really work. Because if you go and you try to write something and then you go back and read it when you're like actually well rested and your brain is working at a high level, you're like, this is crap. And you almost have to redo large portions of it. So, I mean, I'm not saying that there's no use for this ever. Like if you have a deadline at work and all, you know, you, everyone on the teams might, might have to work a couple extra hours to make sure that you meet the deadline. But in most realistic scenarios, this isn't the way to go. How about just schedule your time better, manage your time better. Don't take on a project with an unrealistic deadline. Um, you know, just there's all sorts of ways to manage this better. And the, the, the thing about this approach is about sacrificing sleep to win. It's just so sh short-sighted. And the problem is, is that not, long term sleep deprivation is pretty much associated with every negative causality out there. All cause mortality goes up, rates of depression, anxiety, injury for athletes, it goes way up when you have long term sleep deprivation. So it's just, it's just terrible advice. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be more depressed, more anxious, um, if you want to gain body fat and lose muscle, if you, you know, I mean, it's just like, yeah, if you want all those things, then sure, deprive yourself of sleep for long periods at a time. But uh, I mean, rather what I would suggest is that instead you be religious about your sleep. 
getting a quality eight to nine hours of sleep every single night, you know, where the room is blacked out, you're controlling the temperature, you have good sleep hygiene, so there's no blinking lights, you're not using your phone or your computer in bed, you know, all, all of these things. And you can research sleep hygiene because it's a separate issue, but all of these things contrib contribute to you being healthier, having better cognition, and being happier. And I mean, I don't know what's a better sales pitch than that. That's pretty much everything that matters in life. So I, I, I just couldn't recommend against this approach enough. Look for other ways to get a competitive advantage with your time rather than cutting it out from sleep. Be protective of your sleep. That's what gives you the real competitive advantage because people who get quality sleep every single day get sick less. So I mean, sure, maybe somebody can outwork you in the short term, with less sleep, they might do more quantity, maybe maybe the quality won't be the same as yours, but, but in the short term, sure, yeah, until they get sick and they spend a week in bed with a fever and or you know something like that. So I, I, it just, it's short-sighted, it doesn't work in the long run, and I often find it doesn't even really work in the short run. Like when I'm like maybe two days deep into sleep deprivation, I already feel awful, my performance on everything is decreased. So. I'm just getting very ranty here, but the point that I really wanted to make with this video is that I am completely against the idea of sacrificing your sleep to win or to have better performance at anything. You should look for other areas to sacrifice, keep your sleep protected religiously, get the best quality sleep that you can because it benefits you in pretty much every area imaginable. Uh, I just think that the other approach is frankly stupid and bullshit. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, my friends, have a nice day.